They will not lose five straight series. That is for certain as the Phillies get a nice one tonight. We welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Ben Davis, Ricky Patalico, John Cruck in a moment. Uh, and let's start really with the player of the game. The guy showed it a moment ago, and that's Zach Eflin. Six strong innings pitched. And when you look at his performance coming off what he did last start against Colorado, that's significant. Well, when you look at what he did, I, I said he threw a lot of fastballs. And I'm talking about the sinker, the four-seamer, and the cutter. I, I believe it was 60. What, what I have 60 pitches from those three pitches. So just different variations of the pitch. I thought he was very good with that. He moved the ball in and out with that, kept the ball down at times. Uh, he only had, I believe it was seven swings and misses. I mean, that, that, you're not missing a lot of bats, but they're not making a lot of good contacts. So that's what Zach Eflin wants. I, I, if I'm Zach Eflin, I could care less about the strikeouts. And Ben said something very interesting, that he should watch the day before. Because when you're going, when you have a guy like Kyle Gibson pitching, they're very similar type pitch, pitchers, him and, and Eflin. And Eflin should really take, almost study, those games that are being pitched before him because they could benefit him. And maybe he did that because it, that's what it looked like to me. He went with the same game plan. Let's not worry about the strikeouts. Let's get the ball on the ground. We use movement. Mm -hmm. Ben, I love the way they scored runs, too, on the other side of the ball. They got the long ball going, but they scored runs in bunches. That's so important and, and just as exciting, if not more so, than the home run. Yeah, it was, it was great to watch. Uh, they really, really took advantage of a shoddy Rockies defense. That was some of the worst defense I've seen. I thought last night was bad. Tonight was as bad as you're going to see. Uh, that reminded me of a Little League game. And I'll be sure that they'll be the first ones to tell you they really shot themselves in the foot tonight. I mean, Marquez gave up seven runs. Only four were earned. Uh, the Phillies really just started to pour it on them. Some good at-bats. Again, stayed in the middle of the field. It was fun to watch. I, I took a shot at the bottom of the lineup last night. Oh, for, uh, I believe they were 0 for 12 mm -hmm. last night. Big How about tonight? 5 for 10. Six runs scored and five RBIs. And I think ultimately, as we go across the street and check in with John Crux, John, when that, that by the way, he, he was concussed earlier in the game. I believe he's okay now. He looks all right, John. Getting better. How many Getting better, Michael. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right, we'll just move along on that. Um, when you look at this lineup and what Ricky just said about the bottom of the lineup last night, how important is it that they're able to come back like that and, and join in on the run scored? Yeah, yeah the, I think the, the great thing about tonight's game was they just picked up where they left off yesterday, line drives, put the ball in play. I mean, we talked to Didi after the game, and Didi said, look, all I was trying to do on that check swing, he wasn't trying to check swing, but he said, I just wanted to put a ball in play and get the run in any way I could. You know, he gets the bonus because he gets the infield single and he and he gets the RBI too. But, you know, I, I it just seems like to me these guys are making more of a conscious effort to have more quality at bats instead of just going up there free swinging. And, you know, they're, they're, they have a game plan uh, when they go up according to the situation, and they're really executing that game plan. And, you know, when you're getting production from seven, eight, nine, you should win a lot of games with what they have one through six. And, and uh, you know, this is what we thought this offense could be. We thought they, of course, we thought they'd hit, uh, you know, 10 homers a game, which we know that's impossible. But, what they're doing, though, the way they're playing the game right now, the way they're taking extra bases, hustling, uh, you know, this is this is a team that, uh, you know, not real happy with how the season got off to the start after the Oakland series, that they seem to be uh, uh, making amends for it these first two games here against Colorado. And you see a team, and I know the Phillies would have won last night and tonight on their own, but when you see a team dropping balls all over the place, kicking it around, and you can get some extra runs, how does that, if at all, help loosen up a team and allow it to hit even more? Well, it, it just it just gives you that confidence knowing that if you put the ball in play, you got a chance. And, uh, you know, you, do you do you like to see a team come in and kick the ball around? No, but how many times have we've seen it that teams kick the ball around, but we you can't make them pay for it? The Phillies in these first two games are making the Rockies pay for every mistake they make, and and uh, you know that's the sign of a good team. Do you feel sorry for them? If the, do the Phillies feel sorry for the fact that uh, the, the Rockies are struggling defensively in these first two games? Heck no. Yeah, you, you, you hope they miss. The only guy I ever played with that didn't want to see anyone make an error is Dale Murphy. You know how you got you hit a, hit a ground ball to the shortstop and yeah. everyone in the dugout yelling, boot it, boot it, boot it? Dale Murphy would say, take a bad hop. 
I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> Boot the dang thing. You, the I know of, you're nice and all, but you don't have to be that nice. That's the kind of guy he is. He Lastly, is. John, real quick, Roman Quinn, I heard you say tonight, he can be such a weapon for this mm -hmm. team, and that's true. He could just never stay healthy, unfortunately, or not enough to really make a contribution long term. What do you think will be with him? Well, I, I think that Roman is going to be uh, a, a guy that Joe has to strategically use uh, if he's going to spot start him. But he also has to be smart with when he uses him as a pinch runner. And, you know, we know he's a plus defender. We know he has uh, unbelievable speed. Even uh, with the Achilles injury that he suffered, uh, he still can run. And, and you know, you know, we saw JT steal a base. Bryce stole a base uh, last night. JT stole one tonight, and, you know, it's a weapon that a lot of teams don't utilize, and that's speed and stealing bases, and like Doug Glenville always said, take it, at, uh, grab an extra 90. Roman Quinn can grab an extra 90 and then another 90 and get on third with less than two outs and score runs that way, so he's going to be a weapon, I think, if, if, uh, if he stays healthy, and, uh, you know, he doesn't need to hit because they got plenty of hitting. But if he can get on base and steal bases and, and come in and pinch run and play defense late in the games, uh, you know, he's, he's going to help this team. John Crook at the ballpark. You, you don't seem concussed. You seem very lucid. Oh, I, I, you know what? I, I think it was T-Mac. As soon as T-Mac left, everything cleared up. <laughs> We'll just we'll just save that for tomorrow. Yeah, no crossover. Comment. Don't comment. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to comment at all. I'm going to get him. Thanks, tomorrow. Johnny. All right, John. Thanks all so right. much, my friend. See you guys. See you tomorrow. John Crux joining us from the booth inside the box score of a thumping that the Phillies put on the Colorado Every, Rockies, 10 to three. Yes, sir. Everybody gets involved, but I think the one thing about this team and last year's team, last year they would take a two, uh, three nothing lead in the second inning, and then that game might end up three to two. Right? This year's a little different. Four four runs in the fourth, three runs in the sixth. Tacking on. It, it's it's a great thing to do and, and it really gives the team a good vibe in the clubhouse because everybody's involved, everybody's scoring runs. This was a good old fashioned whooping is what it was. It was beautiful. How does it speak to you, Ben, that box score? Well, I think it, it shows me a lot of what these guys are made of and they're not giving away at bats. But I look to look at the overall picture of how they've played the last couple games. More of the sense not anxious, but more with a sense of urgency. Um, you know, it, it's I wouldn't say they were nervous, but again, more anxious than anything. But they were they're playing this game, and obviously I'm always going to gravitate towards the catchers, but the fact that JT Romuto was still in that game and playing first base, I don't know why he was. Wow. I don't know why Camargo didn't go in and play first base for Reese uh, and give JT the last couple innings off. Maybe JT has the day off tomorrow. But to see him go after the foul balls, and there were numerous foul balls, the way he went after that double that Iglesias hit in the ninth inning, that speaks volumes to me about what kind of player he is and what kind of teammate he is. He's a gamer. Flat yeah, out gamer. and as John said, that's the only way he knows how to play the game. The question is, do you want him playing the game that no, way? That there, late he the game? should not have it. And it, it was what ten to two going into that half inning. There's no way I have him in, in there at first base. So Zach Eflin, tonight's starter, tonight's winning pitcher, six innings pitched, just two hits, and look at the walks. One walk, and we mentioned earlier, and more on this in a future pregame program. But he has gone 28 straight games with two or fewer walks. He's fourth in Philly's history to do that. Number one is Robin Roberts. Number two is Roy Halladay. And number three is Syl Johnson, you know who why? pitched in the 40s. You know why? Because he's got a reputation now that he's not going to walk people. So as a hitter, Ben, what are you going to do? Be aggressive. Go, go up there and swing. Yeah. All right. Let's hear Joe Girardi on his team's win tonight. Yeah, you know, he played well, and he was playing well before he got hurt. Unfortunately, he got hit, you know, on that pitch, and he put the ball in play, and a good thing happened, right? So um, that's important. His defense was outstanding today. Um, he swung the bat well. It's good to have him back. That, that uh, run he scored, too, where he yep. the catcher. I mean, he can run. I mean, he, you know, he's an above-average runner, and... Um, you know, every run's important in days like today just because of, you know, sometimes you don't have to use your back end guys and you get them a day off and, and then they're fresh going into the next day. So, Didi had a really good night. It's good to have him back. Another game where you had some opportunities early and you cashed in on them, cashed in early? Yeah, we took advantage of a situation in the early on and we got the three runs and then, and, you know, it was, it was by some errors and, you know, some wild pitches and, and, and 
some heads up base running and we took advantage of it. It gave us a lead and then, you know, we were obviously able to tack on, which I thought was really important. Bill made a couple of really nice mm -hmm. plays. Um, what have you been seeing out of his defense? I think, you know, he's playing confidently. Um, you know, I think sometimes when you have a day like, you know, he had, you can, you know, you got to regroup, right? You got to regroup your confidence. And um, he's been outstanding since that day. And it took us some time to work through it. But again, like I'm going to say it again, I'm proud of how he's handled it, right? Um, you know, he could have went a lot of different directions after that day, but he's went the right direction. And um, it's really important for his career and us. Zach what everything, about right? Everything. Um, his vast, his fastball had life. His cutter was well placed. His slider was good. His changeup, his curveball. I mean, everything was working. Um, he made an interesting play early on. Uh, made it harder than you know I would have hoped for, but he made that play and then he got on a roll. What have you thought of his season so far? It's been really good. You know, th we weren't sure. You know, obviously, if we were going to have him before May first. Um, He's pitched really well. Starting pitching the last three nights have been pretty stingy and encouraged. Yeah. Um, I think they're getting to where they need to be physically. Um, even, you know, Zach threw a good game. And it just the whole the whole rotation this turn through has thrown much better. I still feel something in the elbow. Yeah, I got to I gotta get to the bottom of this um, to see what we're going to do tomorrow. I'll have more. I'll see how he feels tomorrow. I'll talk to Paul, and we'll go from there. Feel something still thrown? I got to talk to him about it. Like if if he can do anything tomorrow. Like what our next step is. All right, that was a little concerning at the end. Uh, Joe Girardi was talking about Bryce Harper. Said he'd have to see what he would be I, able to do tomorrow. Um, I think it's concerning in the sense that you have a guy in Castellanos, you have Schwarber, you have all these guys that can DH for their days off, you know, take, take them off their feet a little bit, and all of a sudden it's Bryce Harper's new position. And if he's not going to feel well, then, they, I mean, you really have to second, take second thoughts and take, have a different plan of what you actually want to do. So now you've got to look at when do we want to give Bryce days off so I could actually, you know, mix in Castellanos in a DH, mix in Schwarber in a DH. It's a, it's a difficult situation. He's the last guy you wanted to see. Uh, get injured like that, that he can't play the field because Well, if he can't stuck. play the field, he's your DH. There's no one. Right. He's not coming out of the lineup. But that's what I'm talking about. So it's to, for the other guys to get their days off. Yeah. That's what it is because Bryce ain't coming out of this lineup. There's no chance he's coming out of this lineup. And I just did the math. Right now, JT's on pace. We talked about this in the pregame show. JT's on pace to start, not catch, start 144 games. Can he do it? Yes, I think he can do it. But that's a lot on a guy, and it's – I don't know. You got to give him some days at DH too. Yeah. This is 4:15 this afternoon, approximately. Bryce Harper taking throws for the first time in about one week. He has been DHing for the last nine straight games, including tonight. So he went out in the field, and this was planned for. And he took some throws. Looked okay. Um, two for Looks four like tonight. Working out. With a run scored. I hope so. This evening. Here's Bryce Harper on how he felt pregame and what his future is immediately. Come on today. Yeah, I mean, it didn't feel great. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we'll come in tomorrow, see what it feels like, and then, you know, reevaluate tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. Did you feel worse than previously? No. I mean, just felt not better, but not just not, not great. Yeah. I mean, I think it was improved, but not, like, to the point where I'm going to play. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, like I said, you know, we'll reevaluate tomorrow and, and see where I'm at. Discouraging or no? Yeah, I mean, I want to get back out there and play, right? Um, but, I mean, strains and things like that take a, take a minute to get healthy. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's about it. You think you need any further imaging or anything? Or? No, I mean, MRI, I mean, that's that's the main thing that we, were, we got done. And um, I don't think we need anything more than that right now. So. What do you think is that tonight? That looked great. Um, 500 strikeouts. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, being able to do that at home too. I mean, that's uh, it's a pretty incredible accomplishment. I mean, he's he's a workhorse for us. He has been when he's healthy, and um, you know, it's a lot of fun to see him go out there and 
and do what he knows how to do. I mean, 95, you know, with, with that pitch either tonight and that cutter and sinker, I mean, he looked really good tonight. So we're going to need that out of him, and um, I think we all know that. So it's, uh, it was great to see. He's gotten like 28 straight starts with like two or fewer walks. I mean, what is that? That's a terms of just pounding the strike some consistently and you know being aggressive in the zone. Yeah, I mean I think uh, I think we've seen that last couple times, you know, by him, but a lot of our starters as well. I mean we saw that from Knowles on Sunday, right through Sunday. Yeah, right. yeah I mean first big strike is huge for us and um, I mean Eflin tonight, I mean he went out there and, and threw strikes. I mean when you throw strikes good things will happen. Um, you know, getting ahead of counts and being able to kind of throw and do what you want. So um, I thought he looked great tonight. Last couple of games, you guys had some opportunity to score early. You guys took advantage of it again tonight. Uh, just a little bit of that aspect of the offense, the last couple of days especially. Yeah, um, you know, trying to capitalize as much as possible on, you know, other teams' mistakes. Um, being able to get out there and, and get ahead is huge, especially with the guys that we have on the mound. And um, I thought we were able to do that tonight. I um, thought the guys swung it really well. Um, well Dubo looked great up there tonight as well. So, uh, you know, I think just all the way through, I mean, when you're nine holes hitting doubles in the gap and, and hitting homers, I mean, it's, it's a good night. So I um, thought we looked really good. I think it's on the intensity of the throw, would you, how would you describe it? It was, sort of, it was just playing catch, right? Yeah, I mean, it was just playing catch. It just felt achy. So. Are, you, are you feeling any more concern than you felt the other day? No, no. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a strain, so it's going to take time. So, I mean, there's times where, you know, you get out there and, and you throw. I mean, I've never dealt with anything like this, so, um, I mean, I'm not really sure. You know, I think, like I said, we're going to reevaluate tomorrow. I'm going to keep DHing, so, you know, we'll uh, go from there. Do you view it as a setback or just not moving as fast as you hope? Just not moving, you know, just not getting to where I want to be. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's really a timetable right now of when I'm going to play, so uh, I'm just trying to... You know, get my bats and and have good at bats. Castellanos climbing the wall, you know. I told him that. I, I told him that. I said, "You're going to take my spot, man." I, I I probably wouldn't have made that play. So good job. <laughs> right, so. Little chuckle at the end by Bryce Harper asked about Nick Castellanos making that great grab at the wall. Um, he said he felt achy. Jim Salisbury asked him worse than the last time he threw. He said no. Setback he was asked no. I'm just not moving. Not where not getting to where I want to be. There's no timetable for when I'm going to play. That's concerning to me when you, you know he's your number one player in the reigning MVP he plays the field. Obviously he has said it's unsettling to him. He wants to contribute on both sides of the ball as it I've, were. I've had arm, plenty of arm issues as a matter of fact. I mean I was able to throw through them and sometimes you do have to go through pain and with with a lot of my injuries it was the more your arm heated up the better off you felt. But I, I mean there were days where I would go and I mean it was like somebody was shooting a knife into my shoulder. Yeah. And, I mean, of course, you're not always going to feel well, but, I mean, it was a little different back then. It was basically take the ball and go. Now, I mean, obviously they want him to be 100% before he goes back out there. And, you know, 100%, he, what is he, 29 now? 100, 100, at 30 years old, 100% usually doesn't get there. Yeah. When you um, look at this, Ben, you know, the yeah. way you see it, we're not doctors, but uh, it doesn't, doesn't say, well, you are, Dr. Davis. <laughs> I'm, but it does not seem to be a good I'm, This is going to sound funny. I'm concerned, and I'm not concerned. I'm concerned for the fact that he's never had this happen before, and he said that. He said, I've never had to deal with anything like this. So he really doesn't know how to attack it. I'm not that concerned because he doesn't seem very concerned about it. I mean, that was as cavalier as you're going to see for an injury that has kept him out from the last 10 games. And achy does not necessarily disturb me. No. The word achy does not if you, disturb If you say sharp pains, that's then that's he, different. Yeah, that's, sharp that's pains surgery. is different than achy. Yeah, but Achy's no like time you get table. out of bed in the morning. Like, oh. You start hearing, he's right, you start hearing sharp pain or feeling sharp pains, you know there's a surgery coming. Yeah, I hear you, but he's DH now for nine straight games to the exclusion of what, playing the outfield. What, he says there's no timetable the for whole, his return. Well, whole, that's all I'm saying. How could there be a timetable if he's not feeling well and he probably thought he was going to go out and throw today and it was going to be great? Yeah. It wasn't. I know.